Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we discuss with a royal expert what bad future will come first. Archie was exploited for money. Harry was stripped of his royal title. When Meghan exploiting royal for personal financial gain. Here we present a sneak preview of the Sussex's new reality TV show, including eight episodes. Here's where our story begins. Sometimes, whether you love him or hate him, Donald Trump says what we're all thinking. Asked about Meghan Markle telling people to effectively vote against him in the upcoming U.S. election, the president replied, I'm not a fan of hers. Then he paused for thought, smiled ruefully, and added, I wish a lot of luck to Harry because he's going to need it. Nobody's been a more ferocious critic of Trump this year for his woeful handling of the coronavirus pandemic, but I burst out laughing when I saw him say this. His off-the-cuff zinger so perfectly summed up how most of the world now feels the increasingly ridiculous Duke and Duchess of Sussex, whose stupendous ego, to borrow a line from one of my favorite movies, Top Gun, are now writing checks their titled and entitled bodies will find very impossible to catch. For a while now, I've been suggesting that Meghan Markle and her puppet, Prince Harry, are behaving like a royal version of the Kardashians. In other words, a pair of ludicrously hypocritical, attention-seeking narcissists, constantly at war with their families. Now, hilariously, we learned they're going to actually be the new Kardashians. No sooner had Kim and the girls announced they're quitting their repulsively vacuous reality TV show than up popped the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to replace them with one of their own. As part of their $150 million Netflix production deal, they have reportedly agreed to star in a fly-on-the-wall reality series, with cameras following them everywhere for three months. Of course, this extraordinary invasion of their own privacy is exactly what they said they were quitting Britain to escape. But such stunningly two-faced behavior has never bothered Meghan nor Harry, who thought nothing of lecturing to us about our carbon footprints while using Sir Elton John's private jet as a taxi service or preaching about poverty on the same day Meghan was enjoying a $500,000 baby shower party in New York. Megan is apparently especially keen for the public to see the real her. Obviously, some of us who knew her before she sank her claws into poor Harry know exactly who the real Meghan Markle is, a shockingly ruthless, social-climbing piece of work prepared to ditch anyone and anything in her desperate craving for ever greater dollops of fame and fortune. So it must be most amusing to see her try to pull the wool over yet more eyes with her new show. To give you a taste of what's to come, I've had a sneak peek into the future and can reveal some details from their eight-part reality series, Keeping Up with the Sussexes. Episode 1, Murder at Markle Mansions. The series starts in shocking fashion when a body is seen floating in the swimming pool of the Sussexes' palatial Santa Barbara home. Closer inspection reveals it is Jessica Mulroney, Megan's former best friend who was ghosted for being racist, but remains the keeper of all her damaging secrets. Jessica has a pair of Aquazura stilettos rammed in her back, very similar to ones Megan frequently wears and appears to be dead. But as the princess, who is suspiciously barefooted when the police arrive, insists she had nothing to do with the incident, Jessica suddenly sits bolt upright and spews out water. She's still alive. Megan turns ashen and is seen urgently whispering to, ter to Harry, we're like so screwed, call Oprah. Episode 2, The Cambridges Come to California. In an attempt to restore relations with William and Kate, Harry invites his brother to bring his wife and kids to come stay with them. The trip doesn't go well. During a grimly tense vegan dinner with each guest allotted one non-alcoholic beer to go with their kale, black bean, and avocado burrito bowl, William politely suggests that Harry stops spouting off about U.S. politics. Harry punches him in the face and bellows, don't you get it? My Megs is going to be president. William dusts himself down and sneers back of what? The Santa Barbara Women's Wokery Club? Episode 3, all about Archie. To show just how much they want to protect their young son's privacy, Megan and Harry devote an entire show to him. She reads Archie books, including Animal Farm by George Orwell, but adds a more modern, woke interpretation. All non-binary animals are equal, she explains, but some are more equal than others, though none will ever be as equal as us, obviously. 
Harry then takes Archie hunting for bees. We need millions of them to pollinate all mom's avocados and almonds. Archie is bemused. Do they die doing that? He asks. Harry nods. Yes, many of them do, son, but it's all for a good cause. Mom's eco-warrior woke credentials. Episode 4, Life's a Beach. Megan and Harry take the cameras to the beautiful sun-kissed sands of Santa Barbara, where they interview a group of starving homeless people brought there by their production team. Ma'am, weeps one to Megan, please help me. I haven't eaten for a week. She turns to him sternly and replies, well, you must force yourself. The bemused man then tries to hug her, but Megan recoils in horror, screaming, no, COVID, ugh. Horrified, Harry quietly reminds her that his mother Diana once hugged AIDS and leprosy patients. If you think I'm risking my $5 million Chanel endorsement deal, she retorted furiously, you're even more stupid than I think you are. Episode 5, Daddy's Home. Megan's father Thomas is a surprise visitor to Markle Mansions and begs to be let inside to speak to his daughter. No chance, says Harry. You're bad for our brand. Thomas is mystified. But I thought your brand was all about being incredibly kind, compassionate, and caring to everyone. It is, retorted Harry, but that doesn't include our families or any friends who can't help us achieve world domination. Episode 6, In Flagrante with Kanye. Kim Kardashian invites her spirit animal Megan to her Los Angeles home for the weekend to give her tips on how to make billions out of fleecing the public with overpriced beauty and fashion lines. But in a shocking development, Kim nips out for some comfort shopping on Rodeo Drive and returns early to find Kanye and Megan in bed together, both wearing pro-Trump MAGA hats as Kanye sings his smash hit Gold Digger. What will Harry say, screeches Kim. He'll say what I tell him to say, as always chuckles Megan. Episode 7, Queen of the Castle. In an attempt to patch up their marriage, the Sussexes fly to Scotland to spend quality time with the Queen and Prince Philip at Balmoral Castle. They end up spending precisely 3 minutes and 23 seconds, just long enough for Meghan to outline how she sees phase 2 of the woke evolution of the monarchy, which involves her replacing Her Majesty as Queen before Philip explodes and shouts, Oh, shut up, you whiny, deluded Wallace Simpson wannabe. Episode 8, The Great Escape. In a thrilling, cliffhanging denouement to Series 1, the beleaguered, exhausted prince escapes from Markle Mansions in a late-night rescue operation, organized by his former best friends Guy Pelly and Tom Inskip, who Meghan made disown once they married. They, they take him by helicopter to Los, An- to Las Vegas for a riotous good old days night of drinking alcohol, guzzling meat, playing naked billiards, and chatting up dumb peroxide blonde models. The show ends with Harry running around the Bellagio fountain singing Beyonce's song, Freedom. Freedom, freedom, I can't move. Freedom, cut me loose. Freedom, freedom, where are you? Because I need freedom too. As the closing credits appear, the cameras cut back to Markle Mansions, where Megan is charging around the grounds armed with a meat cleaver, screaming, Nobody dumps me. I'm the dumper. Meanwhile, in other news, yesterday, former Lib Dem MP Norman has claimed Prince Harry should be stripped of his royal title because he's currently exploiting it for his personal financial gain. Mr. Baker, author of What the Royal Family Don't Want You to Know, argued the Duke of Sussex should be made to live as a private individual. Harry should not be allowed to keep his HRH title because he's no longer representing the British royal family overseas and is cashing in on his pedigree. Speaking on Good Morning Britain yesterday, Mr. Baker said, HRH means he's representing Britain abroad, but he's not. He's divorced himself from the royal family in practical terms, but not titular terms. He continued, if he keeps his HRH title, he is still eligible for public support from the taxpayer. For example, we're paying up to a million to pay for security personnel to wander around Frogmore Cottage. We'll pay for his travel when he comes back to the UK. He added, Harry clearly is is exploiting the Buckingham Palace connection. If he wants to run away and do Netflix documentaries, that's fine. Do it as a private individual. How about you? Do you agree with him? And what do you think of my video? Please let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and share with your own followers. And as always, subscribe to the Sussex Daily News Channel for all the latest news on the royal family, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later tonight.